Well, hello there. I'm Ron Legrand, and I'm wondering, have you ever thought you'd like to get into real estate but didn't know how or where to get started or where to get the money or what to do next? Well, you're lucky you made it here because I'm going to explain to you today the fastest and the easiest way to make money in real estate. And anybody can do it. You don't need a license. You certainly don't need your credit. Uh, you don't need money. You don't even need experience. So pay attention because I'm going to go through the steps that are involved in that process and show you exactly how you can get started anytime you're ready and make checks from twenty to $50,000. In fact, I'll even show you a few samples of my most recent deals where I did the exact same thing. And by the time we're through, I think you're going to have a whole different attitude about real estate and how to get to the money quickly. A little bit about me before we get started. I know you don't care much about me. You'd rather me talk about you. And trust me, I'm going to give you some things here today that you can implement immediately. And again, I don't care what your background is. And uh, I'll show you a part-time business that will create a full-time income. And I've been at it for 42 years now. And I quit counting the 3,000 houses. Still buy them right up to this very day, as you're about to see. On commercial projects in nine different states. Still have some commercial property out there today constantly running simultaneous businesses, but not the ones that I have to show up to work for every day. You're going to find as you spend some time with me that my whole mission is to help you make more money with less work and create a lifestyle that doesn't require sucking you in every single day of your life and taking up your valuable time with your family. I train the trainers. I've been training the trainers for a long time. Most people that are in the business today came through me, learned real estate, and then went out and wanted to teach it. And uh, many of those, I helped build a business around that. Uh, they call me Godfather. <clears throat> Some people call me Moses. Some people just call me old. Whatever they call me, I don't really care. And I've spoken to the biggest and the best there is out there. In fact, we hired him one time to speak for us. <clears throat> and they, I looked at his hair. His hair is real, by the way. <laughs> and I hired him one time to speak. And all he wanted to talk about was fishing. And this cool guy, you know who that is? That's Gene Simmons from KISS. Uh, he is a really cool guy. In fact, we had him come speak for us one time. <clears throat> and when, uh, when he held out his hand, shake my hand, he said, it's, it's good to meet me, isn't it? So <laughs> I, I love this guy. He's got a heck of a personality. Uh, there, there's three ways for you to profit. And uh, there's an ugly house side of the business. And there's a pretty house side of the business. We're going to spend time on the ugly house side of the business today because it truly is the fastest way for you to enter the business and get a check. And I'm literally talking within 30 days if you go to work and implement some of the things we're going to discuss here today. Again, you do not need your credit. I won't let any of my students use their credit. They don't go to banks and borrow money. They don't fill out any application and nobody checks your credit report. And I don't care what your credit looks like. The worse, the better. And that'll, that'll keep you from a temptation of going out and borrowing money. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is guaranteeing debt. And <clears throat> then we're going to uh, get into the fastest way. But even when wholesale, uh, the uh, ugly house business, uh, you still got two ways to make money. You got wholesale and you got rehab and retail. Today is not about rehabbing and retail. I have no problem if you do that, but I suggest that you actually do a few wholesale deals first, get your uh, legs under, get your system set up, get your head in the business. And because rehabbing and retailing, there's money in it for sure. In fact, I'm doing one as I sit here right now, but it's the, uh, <clears throat> the most costly entanglements and the riskiest part of the business Whereas what you're going to learn today, there is no risk. And I mean, no risk. Uh, we do the terms business very heavily as well. Uh, and, and I'll explain that in another lesson. But today we're going to focus on the fastest and the easiest way. So if you want to get started, this is how most people get started when they come into this industry right here, wholesaling. So what is wholesaling? Well, um, it's really not about buying houses. You can, but most of the houses that we wholesale, we never buy which is why it doesn't take any of your money or anybody else's money. Sometimes we close on them and do something to them, a little something, and then we sell them. In that case, you get a private lender to put up the money. But I am telling you, you don't even have to close on them to make a ton of money. Most people assign the contracts. And I'll explain the process and show you exactly what it takes to get that done. And I'll tell you right now, my minimum check is $20,000. I don't really want to touch a deal that don't net me that much up front and very quickly. I can't say I haven't done deals for less than 20. And sometimes today I still do them for less than 20. But my minimum target is 20 grand. And from there it goes up. There's five steps. 
Incidentally, if you're sitting beside your cell phone, uh, I'd appreciate it if you turn the sound off, but you might want to keep it on to take some screenshots. Uh, screens like this, for example, these are the steps. But I will tell you at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you an email address to send your questions to, and I'll answer them myself and get back to you very quickly. First step is to locate prospects. That's the first step in any business. Regardless of what the product or service is, if you don't find people that want to buy them, you don't have a business. So we got to start there. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of ways to do that. I've got uh, I've got multiple day seminars on just finding prospects. But today I'll give you a couple and and uh, you can take it from there to get started. And you won't have to be spending hardly any money at all. Pre-screening prospects is mostly done by virtual assistants. And uh, I, in other words, I don't even talk nor does my team talk to any seller until after a virtual assistant has called them and fill out an information sheet on them. And then that comes to us. And then, uh, and only then do we call them, uh, make offers. Uh, obviously we got to make an offer, but actually we don't make offers either. <laughs> we let the seller make us offers. And I'll come back to that and show you how and why that works so well. Then of course, we've got to get some kind of a simple agreement. We do have a simple agreement, which anybody can fill out. Uh, and then that's not a big learning curve for anybody. It's only one page front and back. And then we got to get to the money. So we're going to go through these steps today and uh, show you what to do and how, how fast it can happen. And if you just put the pieces together and I'm going to give you an opportunity to get my wholesaling course at a deeply discount. Actually, it is more than 60 percent off. It's more like 70 percent off of its current price as a special offer for you today uh, as a new customer coming in. And uh, you'll see why. I mean, it's so cheap. I have a hard time believing it, to tell you the truth. Um, all right. Step one is locate prospects. All right. There's two ways to do that. One is through Realtors, <laughs> through the MLS system. Now, I have bought a lot of properties through the MLS system over my lifetime. And there are times when it works good. There's times when it's work, not working so well. And I'm going to tell you, for the last three years, it's been not working so well. Because the problem with the MLS system is that uh, they're, they're right there for the public to see and all the investors looking for deals can go into the MLS system. And, and uh, that, of course, that raises the uh, price that people are willing to pay and creates some stiff competition. However, I see that turning around now. Uh, market is slowing down pretty much everywhere in the country, especially on the houses that we're interested in finding. So uh, I'm getting back into the MLS system. And in fact, I'm going to show you one or two here in a minute that I actually bought on the MLS system uh, this year. Uh, and or actually, I didn't buy them, but I put them under contract and made a bunch of money on them. So I'll get to that in a minute. But before I do that, Nick, would you give me the overhead here? Guys, I want to show you the easiest way in the world to work the MLS system. All right. So <clears throat> let me get to one here. All right. Here is a cell phone. See what a cell phone looks like? <laughs> Every day, Ah, every day I get emails from my sister, Barbara, who happens to be uh, a realtor. So um, note one, you're going to work the MLS. You've got to have a realtor working with you. I mean, just no way to do it without that. So Barbara is a realtor. Of course, you can get any realtor to do this. And I asked her to set me up with a daily feed of properties coming through the MLS. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to work the wholesale business, you've got to get down low. You're going to be working with the cheapest houses there are in your area. And that's where the money is in that business. And um, that's somewhere around uh, uh, below your median price or just above your median price in an after repaired condition, not as is. So uh, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, we got to get to that R for after repaired value before we can make an offer. But first, we got to create the criteria that have the best chances of success. Now, I live in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, about a million and a half or so here. So it's a big city and there's a, some small cities around it, but I buy properties in the big city. So I asked Barbara, <clears throat> in fact, if you want to take a screenshot of that, I asked her, I want all houses that the asking price is less than $150,000. Now, my medium here is about $250,000, give or take, last time I checked. Uh, so I know if they're listed below one hundred and fifty, dollars they're ugly. And that's what we're looking for is ugly houses, rehab houses. They got to be needing rehab or you're not going to get a deal on them <clears throat> in this side of the business. So I put in 150. You're going to have to put in whatever you think it is. 
Most of you watching will probably maybe use the same criteria, but you can adjust it anytime you want. I told her I want a minimum of three bedrooms and one bath, minimum of a thousand square feet. And I gave her the three counties that we work in here locally, and that's it. So every day, I mean every day, including Sunday, here these things come across my uh, inbox. Today I've had five of them, I think. I mean, I get multiple of these things every single day. So the whole key is, is how to go through these and decide what you even want to follow up on or mess with. So I'll show you. All right, that's what the first email looks like. Now, if I want information on that house, look at there, they're asking $113,000 for that, $123,000 for that house. So I got to look at the picture of the house. And I'm going to tell you right there, if I'm looking at, you know, absolute garbage or a mobile home or something that I don't want, I don't even hit the blue button there. Okay, so this one looks intriguing. Uh, so I want to find out what it looks like. So I hit the blue button and it takes me right over to the description of the house and photos of the house. Okay, so there's the house. So all I do now, I want to see what the inside looks like. So I sit here on my rump and I scroll through these pictures and find out what the inside of this house looks like. Now, let me go back a minute. It's pretty obvious the outside of that house is going to need painted. It's a nasty looking house on the outside. But I'll tell you what, I've renovated over a thousand houses, and I know how easy it is to make that nasty house look beautiful. Okay, it's called paint. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me scroll through here. And what I'm looking for basically is the inside of the house and what kind of shape it's in. I, I can look through this one and tell it's not, look at there, somebody's already rehabbed this house on the inside. I don't know why they didn't do the outside, I swear. So this house does not need much on the inside. So that tells me I'm going to have a very small uh, repair cost. In fact, I'm going to sit here and look at these pictures and put a repair cost number on this house. Okay, well, okay, I've been trained. In fact, I do the training, but uh, obviously I can tell that it's not a real ugly junker that needs to be bulldozed by just looking at the pictures. They put a new kitchen in it and everything. Now, I'm not going to assume that this house doesn't need any more. Well, I already know the outside needs repaired. I don't know anything about the roof, uh, but I'm guessing if they've come this far, they've already replaced the roof if it needed it. Appliances and all. So I see the asking price is 123. I see that the inside of the house needs very little. I see that the outside of the house at least needs painted. And I don't know what else <clears throat> until we visit the house. So I'm starting with 123. So in my head, I want to know uh, what the ARV is, the after repaired value. Okay. So in my case, I have an acquisition. His name is Adel, A-D-E-L. And he does the work. And he has the work that I used to do, but I replaced myself. And I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing when you get in this game. So what I do when I see that house, I want to know what the ARV is, okay? Because I'm too lazy to sit here and pull it up myself. I send it to him, and that's what his job is. Pull up the ARV and go look at houses when necessary and do everything we need to do to get them bought. And it's even just a part-time job for him. So look at here. Here's what I did. Uh, the A stands for ARV. Okay. I mean, it's too much work to type out ARV for me. I just put the A there. He knows what it means. And he said, I said, it looks good inside. And now he knows to pull up the after repaired value on our system and put some uh, with some comps. And he knows to look at the photos and get, tell me back what he thinks the repair estimate is. By the way, he's never right. And neither will you be ever, but you'll be close enough to make an offer on this house. And I'll show you why in a minute when we get to the formula. So that's it. I'm done with that house. <clears throat> until he comes back to me, which he hasn't done yet. Yeah, he has. He says the R is 100 and, uh, can't read this thing without my glasses, 170, and it needs 30 in work. All right. If I ask him, I mean, if they only worth, it's only worth 170, and they're asking 123 for it, and it needs 30 in work, I know it's a waste of time. I'm done with it. There's no way I'm going to make an offer. I'm not even going to come close to their asking price, so I whack it. And that's exactly what you're going to do with most of them. You're going to whack them. So we're looking for the pearls uh, in this mountain of oysters as we go through this. And it's all based on <clears throat> the ARV versus the asking price once we, and once we put a repair estimate on it. So just for kicks and grins, I'm going to go do this one more time on an ugly house. I think I got a really ugly one in here for you. <clears throat> Maybe. thought I had a real ugly one in here for you. All right, let's see what this one looks like. Um, there's another one today. I, this, I tell you, I think I got about 10 of these already today. 
okay, there's uh, they're asking down here. They're asking 145.9. I know where Carville Avenue is, and I can tell you right now, there's no way that house is going to top 200, maybe 210, 220. So I can tell you already because I know the area and potential comps uh, that we're not going to go anywhere with it because the numbers are too close. But just for kicks and grins, let's see what it looks like. Okay, there's the house. Little bread and butter box. And I'll tell you guys again, if you're going to work in the uh, wholesaling and rehabbing industry, you're going to have to go down to the cheap houses where you live. And I hope you don't really want to live in any of them. In fact, if you want to live in it, you're not in, you're not in a low enough price neighborhood yet. All we're doing is selling these houses to renovators who want to buy them, fix them, and then retail them out. Or if you wish, you can go ahead and close on them with private money, rehab them, and retail them out. And I'm doing one of those right now. I've always got one in the system, but I, uh, re rehabbing and retailing is not my favorite thing. I've done a thousand of them. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Today's world we can wholesale houses and net almost as much as we can retailing them and get the money within 30 days instead of waiting six months to go through that retailing and selling process. So anyway, I think you get it. Contact a realtor, one that works with these uh, junkers, but any realtor can set you up on that. Now, keep in mind, when I make an offer, I'm going to make it through the realtor to set me up. Okay, so I'm just going to, uh, we come up with a number I'm willing to offer. Uh, I let Adam do it first, and then I look at it and see if uh, I agree with it. And then we just email Barbara and tell her to submit the offer. It's <laughs> really that simple. Okay? So you can see how much work I do to actually buy, <laughs> buy, but get a contract on these junkers. Now, uh, for sale by owners <clears throat> is where, frankly, your best deals are. Your best deals are not in the MLS. They're in the, the world of for sale by owners where you're dealing directly with the seller. They're not in the business of selling houses. They don't have hundreds or thousands of people looking for houses through an easy to find source like the MLS. So the problem with the FISBO side of the business is that you've got to do some marketing to get them to come to you. All right. In fact, there's no realtor in the middle. So you're directly in conversation with the FISBO. I'm even going to tell you what to ask them here in just a minute. But before I do, let's see. Here's a. Can they see me, Nick? Yeah. Okay. Here's here's the signs that we put up on the road here. Adel does a few of these a week. We get calls from these. Look how simple that is. They come with a wire hanger. And some of them you staple up the trees and so forth. Been doing this for about 40 years now, and uh, it works. But it's not the only thing I'd want you to do. Um, there's a whole list of things that you can do to get FISBOs to contact you. So <clears throat> um, I'll... I'll give you a chance to get a list of those here uh, before I'm through. But um, shoot, I've got two three-day seminars just on finding quali quali quality sellers. So uh, there's no way I can cover any of that here today. But anybody can put out signs. Anybody can run free ads all over the internet. In fact, our our um, VAs will do it for you, our virtual assistants. I'm talking about I buy house ads. And you know, list about that long of things you can do for free and then I got another list about that long of uh, uh, companies that you can hire to generate leads for you. So you have two choices. You can do the work and not pay uh, outside sources to do it, or you can pay the outside sources and not do the work and let them go do the work. Some people have to start by doing the work. In fact, that's probably a good idea because, you know, you, you, you need to learn what you, what's, what, how to do the things that they need to get done. But then as soon as you can, you delegate them out. And, you know, me, I'm going to sit around. Well, we do both, actually. Adel does some things to uh, acquire uh, leads of our own. And some we, and we hire several sources to generate other kinds of leads. Come to different sources like uh, Facebook and uh, Google ads and uh, <clears throat> cold calling people and all the things that I don't want to do. All right. So in my case, I don't want to do any of it. So if you're looking at me and says, yeah, well, he's got an acquisitionist. Well, so what? I didn't have when I started and for many years thereafter. So uh, when you start, I'm going to give you some simple things to do, and then you get to the point where you can get somebody to do them for you. You'll find them pretty easy to delegate. All right. Uh, only ugly houses. We are not going to go into any neighborhood and buy a beautiful house and get a deeply discounted price on it. It just don't work that way. So anybody that tells you it does, uh, you probably need to go to another different seminar because that is not the way it works. In order for you to get a wholesale deal on a house, cheap price has got to be ugly. There's no other reason for the seller to discount that house. I'll show you a few of them here in just a minute. All right, step two. 
RVAs will collect information for you on what we call a property information sheet. Just happen to have one of those in my desk right here, maybe, or maybe not. Um, oh, here's another thing that you can do. Um, we put out door hangers just like that. Okay. Let me see. We just had 5,000 of these printed. Now get this because you can do this easy. 5,000 of them printed the front and back. They make sure we know they know. Here's a bunch of reasons on the back that um, much of benefits actually on both sides. In fact, if you want to take a shot of that, go ahead. But I'm not going to hold it long. Yeah, well, I guess we could put it on the ammo. You still got it up. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, there's the front or the back. You don't really know which is which. <laughs> okay, here's the other side of it. Now, listen, we had 5,000 of these printed for $550. They're five and a half by 11. They're on cardboard and you got the hole in it and was split in it so you can uh, hang them on a doorknob. An adult got in a car, put four teenagers in the car. He goes into a low end neighborhood, the lower end, the better. And he starts on this side. He put two of them get out each side of the street. He goes another block, two of them get out, and they come back and they meet each other in the middle. While Adel is actually looking for ugly vacant houses, uh, they're obviously needing repairs. They can be listed or there can be not uh, no sign or they can just be ugly. Uh, I mean, they can have a sign, a fourth FISBO sign, or they can be just ugly with no sign, which is my favorites because nobody knows they're for sale but me, including the owner, until we call them. So can you do this? Of course you can do this. Uh, very inexpensive. We paid the kids $10 an hour. Uh, plus he had to buy them lunch when he was through. <laughs> and uh, it was fun. Now they only work four hours. I mean, that's a lot of work. And they hit a thousand houses in four hours last weekend. So um, we got 5,000 of them. So they're going to do it four more times. By the way, we're getting calls on, on them already. You know, you hang something on people's door like that. It's not going anywhere. And a lot of times they'll just hold on to it and make, it makes a good um, uh, book divider or whatever. And, and when you put stuff into their house like that, it tends to hang around for quite a while. So if they're not ready to sell now, sometime in the future, you're still going to get calls on those door hangers. Um, um, we love that. And very inexpensive way to to uh, get out the word out that you buy houses. So you got to generate leads. Let us pre-screen them for you. Uh, fill out a property information sheet. And when you're doing MLS deals, you're never going to talk to the seller. In fact, you, know, you, you have very little conversation even with the realtor who's presenting the offer because everything's done by email today. So uh, that's a lot of, one reason why a lot of people like entering the uh, wholesale business because they don't have to talk to sellers. But, uh, you know, on another seminar, I will tell you that most of your wealth comes from actually the pretty house business instead of the ugly house business. But let's start with the ugly houses and get some big checks coming in. And you'll grow and learn as you go. There's what the property information sheet looks like. Um, the, our virtual assistants will get all that information for you. And then when you get this sheet, <clears throat> you make one quick call to the seller. One quick call to the seller. <clears throat> if it's an ugly house and it needs rehab. And here's your whole script right here. Uh, you know, the seller on the phone and say, listen, if I pay you all cash, <clears throat> what's the least you can take? Guys, I've used those words for 40 years. What's the least you could take? And then when they give you an answer, you follow it up with, is that the best you can do? The seven most important uh, words in the English language when it comes to getting more of what you want and, <clears throat> and letting the seller make you an offer. Did you notice I did not make the seller an offer? I know what they're asking. My virtual assistant's already got that on the sheet. Now I'm calling them up and asking them, what's the best you can do? You will be shocked at the difference in the number between they gave you on the front end and the one that you get on the phone and <clears throat> they give you on the back end. Those seven words should be a part of your English language. Commit them to memory because they're going to be with you for the rest of your life. And I don't care what it is you're buying. Cars, I don't care. By the fact, I bought my daughter a car uh, just a few days ago and, I, and, I, and they came down $3,500. And this is a cheap used car. Just because I asked them, is that the best you can do? And made it clear I wasn't going to give them their asking price. Uh, in other words, ask questions. Answer questions with questions. Shut up and don't get diarrhea of the mouth and watch how fast your conversation abilities change. We will do a lot more work on that going forward. So all your leads are either terms deals or cash deals or no deal. 
and most of them will be no deal. So let's don't get under the impression that we got to make two calls and we're going to buy two houses. It ain't going to happen like that. All right. So uh, <clears throat> you're going to make these easy calls, easy scripts. And remember, we're only dealing with people who told us they have a house for sale and we got the information on the house. So we're not bothering people uh, that don't want to be bothered. They advertise or they contact us. So we're just following up and asking them the question, letting them answer it. And then we'll decide from then whether we want to go see the house or not. Or, or, or even mess with it based on their number. And I'll tell you, a lot of the wholesalers um, in this country never go see the house. Um, I know wholesalers do a thousand deals a year, uh, but they don't do it by going out and see the houses. They work in several cities and they got boots on the ground in each city. Now listen to this. They make an offer online, just like I showed you, <clears throat> gets accepted. They put it right back online at a higher price and, and buyers come to them, but they don't ever leave their desk. So this is literally a virtual business that you literally can do for home. Now, I'm not going to suggest that if you live in the city where the house is, you or someone else that you're working with should go see the house because you can't trust those pictures to be, you know, be right. But, but think about it. If I'm making an offer virtually, I'm getting a contract signed and I'm uh, putting up a $10 deposit. What's the most I can lose? 10 bucks. We don't make offers. We ask questions and let the seller make up us an offer. Wouldn't you agree? That's a question. <laughs> Is that fair? That's a question. Is that the best you can do? That's a question. And then all we do is get the contract signed. Now, again, I th I, very rarely are you gonna meet somebody at an ugly vacant house in these rehab, very rarely. They don't live there. So, oh, we don't either. Very seldom do we anyway. We uh, will just go to the house and, uh, and we don't even have to get in, but, uh, you know, we can get in if we want to get in. But usually the uh, the uh, house has a door you can walk through or a window you can go up uh, with the seller's permission. And frankly, uh, if uh, if it's in, in, a, in your city, you can tell the seller to leave it open. You're going to go out and look at it tomorrow morning or whatever. Um, but um, I work a lot with photos. I sit here at my desk and we look at the photos so I can see the condition of the house. Um, before I even make the offer, but I'm definitely not going to actually close on it if that's what I'm going to do until I go take a look at the house. I'm, I mean, uh, Adel will do it for me. I'm not even going to uh, uh, put it under contract. I'm going to put it under contract, but then we're going to go look at the house immediately. And if there's something that we can't see in the photo or not disclosed to us, we just cancel the contract right then and there. All right. So there's no risk here. Keep that in mind. And almost everything we do today is virtual. But again, if you live in the city where the house is, you really ought to go take a look at it. On the other hand, I know I'm not going to do that until I, until I can see it's a deal. Hey, I'm not going to go running around looking at houses that I'm never going to buy. I did that in my first few years in business and looked at hundreds and hundreds of houses. And for no reason, they just wasted a lot of time and gas for no reason. I can look, I can get everything I need off a line to make an offer on the house. And that's exactly what we do. <clears throat> but here's what the contract looks like. Here's what it looks like in real life. All right. It's just one page front and back, one page front and back, and frankly, uh, it looks it looks complicated. But if you think this looks complicated, go look at a realtor's contract. Sometimes about five or six pages. You know, you know, you'll get familiar with it. It's not written. It's written in um, language people can understand. And if they don't have a real estate license, I mean, a, an attorney's license. And a, a contract that you're going to fill out for an all-cash deal is the absolute easiest contract you'll ever fill out uh, anywhere in this business. And this is all you need to conduct your uh, purchase of the property. And when you get that piece of paper signed, you control that house. And we usually get 30 days to close on it. Whether, uh, whether it's a FISBO or whether it's a MLS house, we get 30 days to close on it. So that gives us 30 days to find somebody else to bring in the money and close on it, and we get the markup. And that's the whole game, actually. Put it under contract, put it out to the market after you've marked it up, and let a title company close on it, and, and they'll send you a check or a wire. <clears throat> you're going to need three things before you agree to a price. Number one, you're going to need the after-repaired value, or ARV, as it is in this industry, and our CRM called Dreams has the easiest place to get that ARV, and uh, you're going to need some training on this one now because I'm telling you, 
a lot of investors make a big mistake by not learning how to get at the ARV. And if you think the ARV is the guesstimate on Zillow, wrong. It is almost never correct. And it's usually low. These estimate on Zillow is usually much lower than the ARV, the ARV. And I don't know what formula they use, but I can tell you that it's not a very good one because if the seller looks at these estimate on Zillow, that's usually a good thing for you because they think that's the value of their property and it's almost always worth more than that. And that's an assuming that it's in excellent condition. Remember, we're buying junkers, so really nobody knows what they're worth until after they're renovated. But you need to know what it will be worth because that number, that R, is the very first one you need to arrive at, which takes two minutes uh, on a website. And then from there, you're going to determine the, what you're going to offer. Uh, but you're also going to need the repair guesstimate. And it's definitely a guesstimate. Um, if you uh, let me work with you on that, I can show you how to estimate the repairs on houses and how to figure out what things cost. And, and pretty soon you're going to come to the conclusion that, hey, they're either going to be 40000 50000 or 60000 It's going to be one of those three. And that's close enough for you to make an offer. In fact, most of the rehabs uh, we do today are about fifty grand, give or take. I'm doing one right now, though. Total rehab cost on it is $42,000. And that's everything that we're doing to the house. Uh, and frankly, that's about normal today, $40,000, $50,000. So when you take a look at the house, and you can see that it needs everything. And it's a small, usually about a 1,200 square foot house. That's the model I use because that's what you're going to be uh, putting under contract for the most part. And frankly, that's what your rehabbers want as well. So um, little bread and butter starter homes, first or last time homes. So you, when you can look at the pictures, you can easily guess at the repairs on the house after you had a little bit of training. And if you get this one wrong, and most people will, because they will grossly overestimate the cost of repairs because they have not been trained in what they really cost. And if you grossly overestimate the repair estimate, uh, and then you're using the wrong ARV, if your ARV is too low, you can see what the problem is. Your, your uh, offer is going to be way down here, and you're using fictitious information to arrive at an offer, and you don't get the houses bought, and you wonder what's wrong. What's wrong is you don't have the R, and you don't have a good, fair repair estimate. A little bit of training will fix that for you for the rest of your life. Uh, just I, You've seen how I make offers on junkers, okay? <laughs> look at them. Look at the repairs. Throw a repair number on them and and uh, assume that's it until we actually get some interest on the other side and then i'll go take a look at the house i don't look at the house i, I still do look at them but i don't look at them until after they're under contract okay uh, no more running around looking at houses that we're not going by remember if i go out to the house and i find out a bunch of stuff wrong um, i'm just going to kill it right then and there <clears throat> so uh no, and don't worry you're not going to be doing the repairs all right so i hope i made that clear your job get it under contract, put it out on the market, and do the steps I'm about to show you. Uh, now, you can buy a close on it if you want. You can raise the money to buy it. You're going to be trained on how to get private money from private individuals, not loan sharks, not people in the loan business, human beings that want to get a higher rate of return on their money, and you'll never run out of money. <laughs> There's trillions of dollars sitting in people's IRAs they don't know what to do with, and once I train you on how to get to that money, uh, you'll find that uh, you find the deal, the money will be chasing you. And I know that doesn't you know, make sense to you until you actually get, understand why these people are lending the money. They're lending the money because it's secured by a first mortgage on the property at a low loan to value ratio at a high interest rate. Uh, what safer thing can they do with their money? Uh, today, the average is about an 8% um, interest rate. And doesn't matter because if you buy the house, and you close on it, and you use private money, and you renovate it, you're going to retail it out and sell it anyway. The money's not even going to be out that long. And when I retail them, I hire a realtor to sell them. That's right. I hire a realtor to sell them. I let realtors do what they do best, sell houses, so I can get out of the way and do what I do best, make deals, which is a philosophy you're going to hear a lot from me. Get out of your own way. All right. Mayo stands for Maximum Allowable Offer. And uh, there's a formula. There's a formulaic approach to this junker business, which needs to be ingrained in you, your head, because if you get away from this formula, you're going to wind up paying too much for the house and taking one of them ugly seminars out there if you close on it. So Mayo equals the ARV, 
Remember, that's after repaired value, not current value, times 70% minus repairs. So if I got a 200KR times 70% equals 140, minus 40 in repairs equals 100. So my Mayo is $100,000. Now look what it says right below that in great big old fat dark letters. You don't pay Mayo. If you pay Mayo, you're not going to make any money, okay? You're going to be selling the house at or about Mayo. And this crazy market we're in, probably a little above it. <clears throat> but the farther you buy it below Mayo, the more profit you're going to make when you wholesale this house to somebody else. So you've got to learn how to make these offers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, never come close to Mayo. And I'll show you some houses in a minute, and we'll see how close I came to Mayo. So let's see if I practice what I preach, all right? I'm going to show you my last five wholesale deals. Uh, and uh, this is the first one. <clears throat> and look at that house. I hope that house doesn't impress you a whole lot. It's a 11 or 1200 square foot house. It's a bread and butter box. And of course, it's ugly. Uh, <clears throat> so the R was only 175. And in, in where I live here in Jacksonville, Florida, that's a pretty cheap R. Okay, uh, Where some of you live, <laughs> that, that won't buy a crack house. Okay. Where others of you live, that'll buy a nice house. But right here in Jacksonville, Florida, which is pretty much uh, a, a good um, segment of America, we got little ones, we got cheap ones, we got very, very expensive in the multi-million dollar houses. Uh, but for the sake of the wholesaling business, we're going to be dealing down low. Um, make sure that message gets you. Get down low, because that's where your deals are. This one came from a, a postcard we mailed out to probate. Uh, we purchased it for 48,000. I think, <clears throat> I think the seller was asking 55,000, <clears> but we got it under contract for 48,000 and it needed 50,000 in repairs. Okay. Notice it doesn't say we did 50,000. We didn't touch it. Okay. We lay a finger on the house, but to rehab it would have took about 50. Now we sold the house as is where it is for 85,000. It took about eight days to do that. Okay, by the time we put it out, we had a contract on it, and we had multiple offers on it. <clears throat> Everybody trying to beat us down, but we knew it was a very fair, fair price, so we stuck to it. Finally, somebody come along and said, sure, I'll buy it for $85,000. That was a rehab. Now, let's look at the mayo. If I, uh, the mayo on that house was seventy two five. If you do the 70% minus repairs, you get seventy two five. Look what I paid. I paid forty eight. Did I pay anywhere near mayo? No, not even close. That's why we made $37,000 net profit on the house. Net profit. Because we didn't buy the house. We had a contract on it and we assigned our contract. And the closing agent collected the money and sent it to us. We didn't touch it. And I, I hope you're getting this because this is a business without all the grief. We probably could have sold that house for a little more if we'd been more patient. But, uh, you know, we, we got many of them coming in. We want to get them in, get them out. And, and what's wrong with $37,000 worth of cold, hard cash we didn't have to do anything for but, sh but uh, sell a piece of paper? <clears throat> and no, we spent no money on advertising. Put it on Facebook Marketplace and I think Craigslist. And we had tons of people calling us almost immediately. And you will, too, because you've got a whole society of greater fools out there that are lower pay for houses today. And um, that's good when you're in the selling side. <clears throat> Dries up to competition, but that's not hard to beat when you learn how to get to these houses. Nobody else even knows it for sale. Now, this was a FISBO, all right? To sale by owner. They called us. Here's another one. R was 230 on it. It's about another 1,200 square foot house, give or take. We purchased this property for 60 grand, and it only needed about 40 in work. We sold it for 112. We paid 60. We sold it for 112. Now look at the buyer's point of view. He paid 112. He spent 40. He's in it for 162,000 worth 230. What's wrong with that? So we left plenty of money in it for the buyer and we netted $52,000 on that house without touching it. Okay. Didn't lay a finger on it. Now uh, look at the, um, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to think of how many days it took us to sell that one. You know, I, I might be wrong. I think we cleaned that one out before we put it on the market, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but look at the Mayo. The Mayo was 121. We paid 60. Did we pay anywhere close to Mayo? Okay, we're not going to make $52,000 paying anywhere close to Mayo. <clears throat> Another one. Now, this one we bought 
at the uh, at a uh, uh, foreclosure auction, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, foreclosure auction. Now, this one I did close on. I did buy, and I wrote the check for the 202, but uh, we ne we only netted 27.8 on it because we had to put a roof on it. Uh, I put a roof on it, and there went 10 grand. And so, you know, we didn't we didn't make a killer deal on this. But what's wrong with what's wrong with writing a check if you have it for 202 thousand dollars, and a couple of weeks later, three weeks later, uh, get a net profit back of 27 thousand dollars? Wonder what kind of rate of return that is. If you got money sitting in your IRA, I just showed you how to grow your IRA real, real fast. In fact, all these wholesale deals are perfect for your Roth IRA. I'll show. I'll come back to that in a little bit. <clears throat> all right, this is a little old house I never even saw. Um, we bought this one came through the MLS, I think, and uh, the R was two hundred five. We purchased it for seventy nine. It needed thirty five in repairs, which we never did. Uh, so we we put it out there and got a buyer for ninety nine nine. So we only netted fifteen thousand dollars. This is way below my standards, right? <laughs> but you know, fifteen thousand is better than no thousand, I guess. But look at the uh, purchase price seventy nine. Look at the Mayo. Okay, we bought it well below Mayo. That's the only reason we can make money on it. <clears throat> I never even seen that house. I don't think I've seen this house. I don't remember it. Uh, Arb was one twenty. Man, that is really a cheap house here in Jacksonville, Florida. Really cheap. Hey, okay. uh, we bought it for forty one five. It would have taken about thirty five repairs. Sold it for fifty five. Netted thirteen five on it, and that's you know to me that wasn't even worth uh, bothering with. But I'm sure if you got a check for thirteen five, you know, I think you'd be very happy. I remember back in nineteen eighty two when I started, my first check was three thousand dollars, and I wasn't happy. I was ecstatic. <laughs> okay, that check launched my entire career. <laughs> that just getting that three thousand dollar, of course. 1982. I don't know what that's worth today, but but it didn't take me long to spend it. Now look, there's $145,000 with a net, 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 net profit on those five houses in less than two months. So tell me, is this business worth your time? That's just five houses in the two months. You know, that gives us 10 more months to make them a lot more money on houses that we did not buy. Well, I bought one of them. Okay. Um, but um, most of the time we just flip the contract. I hope you're getting this because anybody can do this with a little training. I, I had no credit, uh, no money except for one, no repairs, no banks, no contractors, no appraisers, no realtors, no home inspectors. None of that stuff you think comes along with buying and selling houses and uh, no empty house payments. <laughs> I didn't have many payments on the houses because I only bought one. And since we had to pay cash for it, didn't have any payments on it either. So uh, what a business. The rate of return on this business is unmeasurable because if you don't have money invested, nobody can measure the rate of return. Try to explain that to your CPA. Here's some folks that caught on to this and are doing very well with it. $20,000 on the first check. Now she got fifty thousand dollars on a wholesale deal, net profit for crying out loud, in um, uh, Louisiana, sixty-seven thousand dollars, Florida, on a wholesale deal, a little fifty-five hundred dollar deal, because a lot of money for him, and it's over here. you know, tell you tell you what your first check is going to do for you. It's going to convince you that you can actually do it, and it works here, and uh, that's okay with me. They're going to get bigger. <clears throat> $7,000, same thing in um, uh, Pennsylvania. Folks, when you come to the Jacksonville, I hope you do, and you come into our office, you're going to see uh, this building is plastered with uh, testimonials like this. All of our walls are full of them. There's $35,000, another Florida deal. Uh, we have students in all the states, and there is no state where you can't do what I'm telling you to do right now, and that's flip contracts. Texas, $30,000. $23,000, another one in Pennsylvania. So, you know, I'll ask you, is this worth what little time you're going to be investing in it? Uh, what, you know, what are you doing right now to put $23,000 in your bank account? Uh, and you're going to see dozens like them. They're all over the place. In fact, there's a picture of a couple of our walls here in Florida and in, in our buildings, which I'm sitting in right now. You're up there everywhere. So I would love to get your picture on that wall with a copy of your check as soon as you're ready. And uh, by the way, that is federal law. Now you have to send me a testimonial copy of your check after you do a deal. It's the law. So you don't want to be breaking the law.
<clears throat> All right, we got to get an agreement, which I showed you. And uh, you should go see the house if it's in your city and get it signed by the sellers. And then step five is to get rid of it. First thing you do is you order a title search. That's a phone call to any title company to uh, close it for you. Don't need an attorney to close these simple uh, flips. Uh, then you got to put it out on the market. And I'm telling you, all you need to do is Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. You won't need to do anything else. You're going to get more calls than you can handle. Um, select your buyer because unfortunately all those calls aren't going to be buyers. Some of them are time wasters. Some of them are out there offering ridiculous, stupid prices for the house. I don't know what seminar they went to. I know we put one out not too long ago. And I think we were asking, uh, 184. I had two or three people come in and offer me 90. So I took my asking price and cut it in half. I don't know how they intend to buy houses, but they sure ain't going to buy none for me like that. So you got to weed through a lot of those stupid calls. And I'll teach you in time on how to get to the bottom of it real quick and find out who you uh, spend your time with and who not to do it. So pick out the buyer and, and get an assignment signed. That's an assignment of contract. And when you get that, here's what I do. I send, we, we agree on the numbers. I send them an assignment of contract that looks like that, because that is it. Very simple. Um, whatever I'm marking it up, I'm marking it up 20 grand. I put right on here that I'll get 20 grand at closing when they buy. And by the way, I don't get paid till they close now. So nobody's going to write you a $20,000 check. They haven't bought the house yet. In fact, they're not going to write you a $20,000 check at all. Okay. So if I'm buying a house for 100 and I'm selling it for 120, title company is going to collect 120. And give the seller 100 and give me 20. It's that simple. And there is no closing. You don't walk into a room anymore and close deals. Okay, it's all done virtually. Uh, you know, we used to sit there and sellers looking at the buyer and trying to figure out some kind of way to kill time and conversations. None of that's crap anymore. Everything is virtual. And I don't care where you live, And which makes the point, what difference does it make what state you're in? Because a lot of wholesalers are multi doing it in multiple states. That's the only way you're going to get the kind of volume they're getting. But tell you what, let's have that talk after you get a few deals under your belt. Because <clears throat> you can either be a real estate investor or you can be in the real estate business. Being a real estate investor is good enough for now. Let's get the check coming in and see where you want to go from there. So here's the recap. Find a seller. And usually they call me. We do both. Sometimes we find them. Sometimes they contact us on our marketing. I'm going to get a contract signed virtually. I'm going to send I'm going to send a copy of it to the title company, let them check the title. The title's okay. We're just simply going to put it on the market. Okay, a few days later you're going to have a contract on it. You're just going to have to choose which buyer that you think is real and get a deposit from them. So let me go back a minute. Here's what we do. We send this assignment of contract to them and we tell them, in my case, I tell them I want a $1,000 deposit and I I say send it back by Cash App or Zelle. And think about that. Nobody has to go to the bank. Nobody has to write a check anymore. Send it by Cash App Brazil. And then, uh, so sign this, send it back with your deposit, and then I'll send it to the closing agent to set up the closing. And I choose the closing agent. <clears throat> it's the same closing agent to just check my title before I put it on the market. And I'm not going to have any cost there because when my buyer buys, they're probably going to want title insurance. And my title company is not going to charge me if they write a title policy over the buyer, right? So I choose my buyer and then I just sick them. The closing agent does all the work. They contact the buyer. They collect the money. They know where to pay the money because they got my contract. They know what the uh, yeah, contact information is for the seller. And they do it all virtually and they just send you a check. And then what do you do? Do it again and again and again and again. Remember, we gave me 145 grand in two months on five junkers. And by the way, that didn't even include the terms deals we did at the same time. So I think you're getting the point here. I don't care what you're doing for a living. I bet we can beat it here in just a very short time. <clears throat> so what's my risk? Well, <laughs> if I'm buying a house from a FISBO for sale by owner, I, I give them a $10 deposit. Okay. If I'm uh, buying it through the MLS, they're going to want a $1,000 deposit. But even then, they give you a few days to uh, inspect the house and back out if you don't want the house. So what's the risk? There is no risk. Okay. There is no risk except for my $10. Because get this now. Nobody can make you buy a house. Pretty much the law of the land. The only remedy for default 
for the buyer is if they uh, uh, is to, is their earnest money deposit. In this case, the most a seller can get is their ten ten dollars uh, or a thousand dollars if you're making offers through the MLS. <clears throat> can you do it in your IRA? Oh, yes, you can. And when I get a chance to explain to you how valuable that IRA is to you, it's going to light you up like a Christmas tree. Not only can you do it in your IRA, you should be doing many of these in your IRA because it's tax free. You never pay taxes if you do them in your Roth IRA. For example, let's say my IRA puts up a hundred dollar deposit because your third party administrators would prefer you use a hundred. I don't know for some reason they just like it, and uh, you know better looks better. There's no law that says you got to put up a hundred dollars. In fact, there's no law that says you got to put up any earnest money, but it is the normal thing to do. So to to eliminate any future conflicts about that, I just give the I just let my uh, IRA put up the hundred dollars. Now your IRA's got to put up the hundred dollars uh, and, and up front because you can't buy a house and then stick it in your IRA. You can't do that. Your IRA must buy the house. Now again, we don't use the IRA's name on public record as the owner of the house, but that's another seminar because along the way you're going to learn how to protect yourself as well uh, while you're making money. You got to learn how to keep it. Now, not only from predators, but also from the IRS. So let's, let's say I got a contract. Seller's got $100. Now I put it on the market and I collect a $20,000 net profit, which is the whole goal. Well, that entire $20,000 has got to go in your IRA. Tax free. Try to explain that to your CPA, by the way. Put up 100 and got back 20 grand. <laughs> You'll think there's something illegal about it for sure. Now there's a limit on how much you can contribute to your IRA, $6,500 or whatever it is right now. But please don't confuse that with your IRA making a profit. There is no limit how much your IRA can earn in a year. I'm going to say that again. There's no limit how much your IRA can earn. Tax-free, I might add. Money will grow 10 times faster tax-free than it will taxed. And in fact, that's what I do with my IRA. I use it to pay cash for houses. In fact, I just showed you one of them. It paid cash for a house, and I forgot I made, we made on it. But anyway, we flipped around very quickly, and, and here's a bunch more money coming into my IRA. Now I've got to figure out what to do with that. Okay, I know. Let's go pay some more cash for houses and actually close on them. So you're not going to be doing uh, very many wholesale deals in your IRA before you're going to have the plenty of money in it if you want to buy one, close on it, and then rehab it. But the truth is, in today's market, um, I analyze the difference. What do I think I'm going to make rehabbing it? What am I going to make wholesaling it? And frankly, today, those numbers are so close together. I, I don't know why I'd want to rehab it when I can wholesale and make almost as much as I can rehabbing it. Uh, rehabbing it's going to take months. Wholesaling it's going to take days. It's a choice you get to make. And honestly, even if you don't have the money to close on it, don't forget there's a whole world of private lenders out there who will gladly put up the money uh, to get back there three, four times what they're getting in their bank account. <clears throat> How long does it take? You should be in and out in 30 days. And if you're not, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And what that something is, is probably you paid too much for the property. And now you're trying to get somebody else to pay you too much. And if that happens, it happens. Big deal. And you lose your deposit and you learn on the next time. Or maybe you bought it in a, uh, a war zone and didn't realize it was in a war zone. But your buyers know it's in a war zone. I'll tell you, it doesn't matter today. I tell you, I buy houses in war zones today and they still buy them. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just appalled. At uh, it's what some of these buyers don't know that they should know, to be honest with you. I used to renovate houses in war zones. <laughs> Before I could get them renovated, they'd be unrenovated. The neighbors would steal the stuff as fast as we put it in the house. And here's the big one. Even after we renovated it, who's going to qualify for a loan to buy it? The answer was nobody, because if they could, they wouldn't be living in the war zones. So we got wholesaling, we got rehabbing. I won't touch a rehab for less than a $50,000 net, net, net profit. And again, it takes months. Wholesaling takes days. And um, yeah, I just showed you one where we made uh, $52,000 on a wholesaling deal. <sighs> no way I'd want to rehab it. But you get to make those choices. <clears throat> I do them all. I rehab them. I wholesale them. And I do terms deals. And so will you. I don't want you to, to uh, go through this business with blinders on, like I see so many people doing, just focusing on wholesaling. You know, the same houses that you wholesale could be houses that you renovate. And you cannot buy ugly houses without getting chance to buy terms houses. So make sure you watch that video. 
Uh, and you can't buy terms without finding a bunch of ugly houses. So the game is, uh, goal is for you to watch, learn the whole business and become what I call a transaction engineer. So you don't walk over to dollars to get to the dimes and go through life with blinders on like I see so many real estate investors doing. Can you really do it without money? Well, no, you can't. Because you're going to need at least $10 earnest money deposit on a FISBO. <laughs> $1,000 earnest money deposit on an MLS deal. And yeah, you got to do a little bit of marketing, but you can do it the cheap way or you can let somebody else do it for you. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of cheap ways, if that's all right with you, and a whole bunch of people that you can contact to get the leads for you. Um, frankly, most people come in this business and they start wholesaling houses. I think you can see why. I did. Back in 1982, I, I didn't know anything but wholesaling for quite a little while. Then I got into rehabbing. I didn't have any idea what terms was, uh, you know, and I made way more than I'd ever make on my job. But shoot, I probably lost way more than I made because of what I didn't know. So, uh, again, it's OK for you starting wholesaling, but I'm not trying to tell you that this is all you want to do because you're leaving a lot of money on the table if you do. <clears throat> Everything you need to do, the entire business is right at your fingertips. And I'm going to give you a chance right now to get step by step instructions on how to do these simple wholesale deals. I've got everything you need to know in one simple system. It's called Wholesaling Ron's Way. <clears throat> You're going to learn. You know, it's got all the uh, forms that you need to do this business. And it's got the scripts, as simple as they are, uh, all kinds of marketing sources. Uh, certainly got to train you how to get at the R on uh, our uh, dream site or any other site for that matter. I'll send you the information on your virtual assistants. You're going to be impressed at how cheap they are to take all those inbound calls for you. I'm sorry to make all those outbound calls. We have another company that takes the inbound and then we have our VAs to make the outbound, fill out the PI sheet and a whole bunch of other things they do for you. It took two days to create this system for you. Uh, way more time than we got here today. So I'm going to take you through each of these steps in detail and make sure you understand them and give you the tools to work with. And when you get to the end of it, you'll see that it's frankly a sixth grader almost could do this business. Uh, how to determine the R, how to estimate repairs from your desk. That's one I know that scares you right now. It won't scare you if you give me a little chance to show you how simple it really is. Uh, <clears throat> how to know what your maximum offer can be and how to avoid risk. Guys, I'm all about avoiding risk. All right, I'm done with risk taking in my life. And there's no reason to every time that I get out and, and uh, get away from my 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 own rules Guess what happens. You know what happens bites me in the butt. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing any more debt. I'm not doing things that are risk risky. I'm doing things that are not risky. And I want to pick the low hanging fruit. I don't want any big projects that suck up your life and not make you any money. So a minimum time, that's very important to me. Okay. It's one thing to learn how to buy and sell houses. Another thing to learn how to do it and not suck up your life. Uh, I'm all for delegating. In fact, we even have a book called the less I do, the more I make. It's on Amazon or you can get it here. Minimum time, not maximum. Where to get the money if you actually want to close on one. And you might, okay? You want to rehab a house? I, certainly I'm all for it. But I'd be very careful if, you, uh, if you're brand new to real estate business. Rehabbing a house is probably not the first thing you ought to do because there's some serious seminars uh, right there waiting on you if you do. A uh, lot more to learn, way more to learn rehabbing a house than there is just wholesaling these junkers. <clears throat> Uh, how to buy and keep, uh, find and keep the uh, to, uh, the right realtors to make offers for you. And uh, also how to sell a house quickly and, and how to price it right so that it does sell quickly without giving away all of the money. Uh, all of these things are all part of a system. And how to adapt to today's market without breaking any laws. And that's one thing. Uh, it is state by state. But there, uh, there is no law that says you can't buy real estate, okay, in any of those 50 states. <clears throat> How to set up and run your business from home on a $1,000 a month operating cost. And I promise you that's true. I mean, that doesn't give me any money to spend on marketing, but I'm or very little money. But I'm telling you, you don't need to put a bunch of money into marketing to go get out and get, a, get yourself a nice check. <clears throat> How to do deals in your IRA. And this is very important. Very important. I don't know where else you're going to learn this. And wholesaling houses is one of the best things to do in your IRA to build that cash very, very, very quickly. How to use your IRA to pay for your kid's education from birth to age 30 legally. Do you believe that? It's absolutely true. 
So you're going to learn how to literally pay for your education for your child or your children and not have to write checks or set up a savings account to deposit money in it every month or any of that nonsense. I'm going to show you how to flip a couple of deals in your kid's IRA that they can use for educational expenses all the way to age 30. And that is way beyond tuition. Anything that has to do with the education throughout their entire life up to age 30 is uh, comes out of this tax-free account. You're never going to write a check for it. Uh, if you don't get anything but that and you got children, I tell you what, uh, you're going to be thrilled with that information because it's going to change uh, everything you do going forward to you as far as it goes to your children or your grandchildren. In fact, I'll show you how to pay for anybody's education if you if you're so inclined by a not you writing a check uh, and everything you do is tax free. So to make sure you understand that clearly, when you get this wholesaling course, I'm also going to throw in a whole course on getting rich in your IRA. Uh, I mean, a whole course on this. Uh, so, you know, you learn how to make money. Let's learn how to make money tax free and keep more of it from the IRS. What's this going to cost? Oh, you worried about that. <clears throat> ain't gonna, don't worry. Ain't going to cost you $14.97. Not even going to cost you $9.97. It's only going to cost you not even $4.97, but four, four payments of $98 or one payment of $2.97. That's what this information is going to cost you. Uh, never in my entire life have I ever sold this product this cheap. And uh, it's a very limited opportunity for you. <clears throat> but it's only available at that price while you're here. It's a frankly a new customer offer because I want you in our system so we can work together for a long time. And that's why it's so cheap. It's a shameless bribe, actually, to encourage you to get to know me. And I expect you and I are going to build a lifelong relationship if you like what you hear. And if you don't like what you hear, just let us know and you get a full refund. No form to fill out, no no crap to go through, no restocking fee or any of that junk, and we'll refund your entire uh, amount that you paid for the system. Is that fair? <clears throat> so here's how to get it free. All you've got to do is take this system and go out and implement the steps that I give you in detail. And if you do a deal within 90 days, just show us. Send us a picture of your check. Send us a picture of you. And we're going to send back your full purchase price. We're going to write you a check for your full purchase price. Okay. There's no catches. There's no games. There's no crap. Just go out and do a deal. Go out and implement what I ask you to do. Uh, and, and we'll give you back your money. <clears throat> so it's really a refundable deposit. But I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. In addition to my wholesaling system and my free, I mean, my wholesaling system and my free IRA course, I'm also going to send you uh, where to get the money. So, And that's only if you want to buy a house and rehab it. Remember, you don't need money to wholesale a house, except for your deposit, because you're not going to buy the house. So you don't need to raise money to purchase it or to repair it. That's the whole goal here. Make money without using your money. I'm going to throw that in for you. It's a $500 value. Um, no credit. You don't need credit to raise money. You don't need banks. You don't need applications. You don't need no time delays. You don't need anybody else to give you permission except the lender. And they're going to be thrilled to do it. Uh, there's no limit on how much money you can get or how many houses uh, that you can do. And there's no personal guarantees. And that's my biggest problem. Uh, the biggest problem in your industry, in this industry, in fact, the biggest problem in most people's lives is that they just feel like they got to go guarantee debt to make money. And that's just not true. Just not, in fact, that's the biggest mistake you can make is guaranteeing debt. And I'm going to pound that into you. So, oh, here's one, how to take title and protect your privacy in all 50 states using land trust. You've got to understand how to take title to keep your name off a of public record and to put yourself in a position to where no predator or creditor is going to take your assets away from you. Uh, it's going to all come along with your training. And it starts right here with this uh, course on uh, land trust. In 50 states, I might add. Okay, And then I'm going to send you another um, lesson on how to use virtual assistants and what they can do for you. And pretty much everything that they can do from you with a phone or online is out of your life for very, very uh, minimal amount of money. And you know what that's going to do for you? That's going to take all the minutiae crap out of your life so that you can spend time looking for deals 
and not wasting time chasing dead ends and doing junk work. The less I do, <laughs> the more I make. So there it all is. If you want to take a photo of it, your whole wholesale system that normally costs nine hundred ninety-seven dollars. Yes, it really does. Your IRA course four ninety-seven. Where to get the money is four ninety-seven. How to take title course is ninety-seven, and then uh, virtual assistant is two ninety-seven. But actually, I forgot one. I'm going to send you another course on how to find quality leads. That's right, how to find quality leads. I don't even have it on there. Uh, in fact, it sells for four ninety-seven as well. So yeah, that's a shameless bribe. And I hope you can see that that's kind of a poor business decision not to take me up on this offer, especially when you've got a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. In 1982, I spent $450 on my first course, and it didn't come with all these bonuses, okay? And I don't know what that is today, but it was a lot of money back then. I had to borrow it. I didn't have it. Plus, I'm going to give you the rebate certificate on your first deal so you can get all your money back. And uh, a 30-day unconditional refund. I don't know how, what else I can do for you. So take me up on this offer because it's a very, very limited offer. It's not a life-threatening decision, but it's very likely a life-changing decision. I know mine was. 1982, when I went to my first seminar, I had no idea what was going to change in my life. I didn't wake up that day and say, I'm going to have a life-changing experience today. I did not. And I didn't even know after I got out of that seminar how effect it was going to affect the rest of my life. Not only my life, my children's life, my grandchildren's life, um, and thousands of other folks' lives along the way when I started teaching what I learned the hard way after doing over 3,000 deals. So uh, well, you never know what decision you're going to make. It's going to change your path. Maybe this is it for you, especially with no risk for crying out loud. Uh -huh. So um, you'll get the link to get started. Uh, the day of or the day after that you register. So go right here right now, uh, pick up the phone and call my team. They're, they're waiting on your call, or you can go do it online at ronswholesalecourse.com. And this is the lowest price I've ever offered, and you will never, ever see it this low again. So you got to do it right now, right now, and and uh, before this offer comes down. So there it is for you, uh, ronswholesalecourse.com or 800-567-6128 during normal business hours. You're in California, remember, and we're not on the time frame that you're on. And here, if you got questions, write that down. Ask at ronlegrand.com, and they'll come to me, and I'll get them answered for you as soon as I get them. Uh, and I'm happy to do it. So I've laid out for you. I brought you to bear. Now you got to go skin him. So take me up on my offer, and let's get together. And I promise you, it'll be a lifelong uh, relationship once you get your head in it and figure out how truly, really it is easiest to uh, make money on a wholesale deal. So thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon.